Using formulas in Excel is a great way to unlock the full power this program has to offer when you want to work with lots of data. In this video, I will help get you a good grasp on the fundamentals of creating formulas, how formulas work together with data, and how to use them to automate loads of calculations. The first thing you need to understand before starting with formulas is how a formula is put together and used by Excel. In Excel, you can create formulas in the formula bar that you can find right here. So if you want to type or edit formulas yourself, this is where you need to be. To start a formula, you need to type an equal sign. This will tell Excel that everything following the equal sign is a formula. The easiest way to use formulas is to do basic calculations. You can think of this as a calculator, where you can type a number followed by a plus sign to calculate basic additions, an asterisk sign for multiplications, a slash for divisions, and minus for subtraction. Now you can add your second number and Excel will calculate your formula. This is already super useful, but Excel becomes even more powerful when you start making formulas using functions. After the equal sign, instead of making a basic calculation, you can add a function. Formulas that use functions are always followed by arguments. To understand this, let's look at a formula that uses a function. Here we have a table that shows how many cases we have sold online in the past few weeks, and the average number of cases we sell in our store each week. We also have a large organization that buys 100 cases from us each week. We want to calculate the average number of cases we sell each week. Let's take a look at how we can do this using this formula. Functions are always listed as a specific word or sequence of letters that indicate what the function can do. Excel has many functions to choose from that we will take a look at later in this video. The function being used in this formula is the average function. The average function does exactly what you would expect. It calculates the average between a few given numbers. After the function, we open a bracket. This bracket indicates that we will now write arguments for the function to use in its calculation. But what are arguments? Arguments can be seen as instructions for the function to follow. A formula can use multiple arguments. These arguments are separated by semicolons. Knowing this, we can see that this formula has three arguments. Let's look at these arguments to get a better understanding of how they work. The first argument is H10. This argument is referring to the cell located in column H on row 10. Knowing this, we can see that the selected cell is the average amount of cases sold in our physical store each week. This means that whatever number is in this cell will be used in the formula, right here. This is true even if we change the number in this cell later. The second argument is J10 colon J19. This argument refers to all the cells between the two cells J10 and J19. Knowing what we have just learned, we can see that this refers to the table showing our online orders from the past few weeks. The last argument is 100. This refers to the 100 cases that get bought by the large organization I mentioned earlier. Because this is just a number and does not refer to a different cell, the only way to change this amount is by changing it manually in the formula. Now that we understand the arguments being used here, we can see that this argument will calculate the average number out of all these cells and the number 100. Awesome, right? Now that you know how basic formulas are formed, let's look at the formula tab and see how we can use it to more quickly and efficiently create more complex formulas. You can find the formula tab at the top of the ribbon. The formula tab has four categories. Those are the function library, defined names, formula auditing, and calculation. In the function library, you can find the insert function button. You can also find a shortcut to this button next to the formula bar right here. If you press this button, a new window appears where you can find all functions available in Excel. At the top of this window, you can find a search bar where you can look for specific functions. Next to the function button, you can find the auto sum menu. Here you can find options to quickly apply functions for basic calculations. In recently used, you can find all functions you used in recent formulas. In the menu labeled financial, you can find all functions to calculate money related calculations. Under logical, you can find functions to easily convert and filter data using calculations. Under text, 
you can find all functions that use text instead of numbers to create a formula. Date and Time has all functions that help calculate time and calendar related calculations. Lookup and Reference has all functions you can use to quickly scan and reference large amounts of data. Under Math and Trig, you can find functions that can calculate larger and more complex calculations. And under More, you can find more complex calculations that help with data and statistical analysis, engineering related calculations, web integration, and more field related functions. Creating a formula through the function library can be a lot faster and easier than typing one out manually. If you select a function here, a new window will appear where you can fill in arguments for your formula. Excel will then automatically separate them using semicolons, saving you a lot of time. I will now show you how you can use this to stack formulas together and make cool interactive spreadsheets. To explain this, I will use this spreadsheet. In this spreadsheet, we can see a table with case sales numbers from week one to five, a table with the price of a case, and a table that shows the average weekly profit. However, there is a lot of missing information. But now that we know how to use formulas, we can automatically calculate all this data super easily. First, let's calculate the profit for each week. To do this, we will use a sum function. A sum function simply adds the value of all the cells from its arguments together. So to start the formula, we type an equal sign in the formula bar, followed by sum to tell Excel that we want to use the sum function. Now we open a bracket to start typing our arguments. Now we can select this column here and Excel will automatically create an argument with the first cell from this column and the last cell from this column with a colon in between. Now the sum function will add the value of all these cells together. But we want the total profit, not just the total number of cases we've sold. To calculate this in the same formula, we can now close the brackets to show Excel that we are done with our sum function and its arguments. And we can now add a star followed by this cell here to multiply the total amount of cases sold with the price of each case, giving us the total profit of that week. We can now copy this formula to the cells from the other weeks. But before we do that, we need to understand how copying formulas works. When copying a formula, the cells mentioned in the formula automatically change in reference to the cell we are copying the formula to. So if we want to drag this formula here, instead of reading this column, it will read this column. This is good because that's what we want. However, we do not want the part of the formula that references the price of each case to move to this cell here. To prevent this from happening, we need to lock the cell in the formula. To do this, we need to put a dollar sign in front of the column letter. Now Excel knows not to change this cell when we copy the formula. Now we can select the cell with the formula, grab the square at the bottom right of the cell, and drag it across the entire row to apply this formula to the whole table. Now at last, we will write a formula here that calculates the average profit a week. To do this, we will use the outcome of the formulas we just created. We will use the same average function as before. So we can type an equal sign followed by the average function. Open our brackets, select this entire row and close our brackets. Now we have the average profit per week automatically calculated for us. And it will even update when we change any of these sales numbers, just like this. How cool is that? Now you know all the basics for making formulas in Excel. You can start experimenting with different functions and arguments and make even more complex spreadsheets that quickly process a bunch of data. Good luck!